I like this Sunday morning energy. Anyone glad to be in church this morning? Come on, I think we should take 10 seconds and give Jesus a shout of praise in this house today. Come on, you're not applauding me. You're applauding King Jesus. Come on. Wow. I feel good. So good to be in church. You can go ahead and take a seat this morning. Well, it is a, an honor and a privilege to be with you this weekend. If we've never met before, my name is Caleb, and I'm just so thrilled and delighted to get to be a part of this weekend and everything that God is doing at Champion Church. Uh, I got to be here last year, and last year was uh, a fantastic year, but it's amazing to see in 12 months the, the new level that this church has gone to, the new level that the youth and young adults have gone to. How many youth and young adults do we have in the room? Make some noise. Let's go. Come on. Well, I just love this church. I love your pastors. Pastor Stephen and Lucinda are the real deal. And the Bloomfield family have become like family to our family over many years. And I'm just so grateful that you've entrusted this platform to me and to us. And uh, I love you both so dearly. And uh, just grateful for your friendship and your leadership. Anybody else grateful for your pastors? Can we show honor where honor is due this morning? Come on, let them know you love them. Yeah, come on. And pastors Becky and Caesar, two of the finest people I know. Thank you for saying yes to the call of God. We are seeing the fruit of it and uh, we ain't seen nothing yet. And listen, I've been in three services and I leaned over to Pastor Lucinda and I said, was he wearing that watch the whole morning? Because I'm like, what is that blinding my eyes? It looks so cool. It is a bit gangster and now I'm a little bit more scared of you than I was to begin with. But you wear it well. Um, I bring greetings from England, the great country of England. Uh, we live in the Midlands near to the city of Birmingham. And uh, I get to lead a youth ministry at my parents' church known as Champions Church. So we are almost related, very closely related and uh, just so thrilled to be here. Last night was phenomenal. This morning has been fantastic. I'm pumped for tonight. What a weekend to be alive, eh? Well, I'm excited to preach. Uh, this is the last service of the morning, so you're going to be the most encouraging, the most responsive, the most friendly looking people that I've seen all morning. Isn't that right? Good. We're going to go to the book of Revelation. It's the last book of the Bible. Don't be scared. <laughs> I know it can be a scary book to some. But uh, we're going to go to the book of Revelation, chapter 3, beginning in verse 14, and listen to what it says. These are the words of the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the ruler of God's creation. And here Jesus is about to address a church. And he says this, I know your deeds, that you are neither cold nor hot. I wish you were either one or the other, which is kind of incredible when you think about it, that Jesus is saying, I'd, I'd rather you be cold than what you are right now, and he's about to tell us what they are right now. So because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I am about to spit you out of my mouth. Wow, that's pretty strong language there from Jesus. You say, I am rich. I have acquired wealth and do not need a thing. And these are five of the most powerful words, but you do not realize. <laughs> Another way of saying it is you are greatly mistaken. You think one thing, but the reality is far different. 
You do not realize that you are wretched, pitiful, poor, blind, and naked. And then he goes on to say, I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire so you can become rich and white clothes to wear so you can cover your shameful nakedness and salve to put on your eyes so you can see. Those whom I love, I rebuke and discipline, so be earnest and repent. The title of my message this morning is, Are You Cute or Are You Hot? A little bit cheeky, I know, but it's youth weekend, so why not? Are you cute or are you hot? Let's pray and let's ask that God would speak. Father, we thank you for your presence in this place. I thank you that your word is alive and it is active. It is not a history book, but it is the word of God that is alive and active. It speaks. And I ask that you would open up our hearts today to receive from us all that you have for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I don't know if you've spoken to a young person lately. I'm 27 years of age and As I've said, I'm the youth pastor back home, so I spend a lot of my time with young people. And when you speak to young people, you might have noticed this, um, they keep you on your toes. Shall we say it like that? I was listening to a young person talk recently on an interview, and they dropped out the word riz. And I'm like, riz? I never heard about riz before. So I googled it which is what you're supposed to do if you don't know the answer to something. And so, turns out Riz is short for the word charisma. So you kind of use it in the context of, you know, if a guy has a bit of a way with the ladies, you would say he's got Riz. So wives, if you want to encourage your husbands over lunch today, just nudge him and say, honey, you got Riz. See what happens, okay? Okay. So, I'm like, I never heard this word before. A few years ago, you used to say that someone had game. Maybe you're more familiar with that. A guy, he's, he's got game. Now, here's the thing. Some of you are sat here today going, I don't know if it's the English accent or the pink laces, but I have no idea what it is that you're saying. I don't know about Riz I don't know about game. It just used to be called good manners when I was growing up. And this is my point. It is very hard to keep up in today's society with all of these new words, all of this new vocabulary, all of these trends. Wouldn't it be helpful if on the news channel, maybe say once a month, the reporter came on and said, for the next half an hour, we're just going to let you know all of the words that have changed their meaning just to keep you informed. Because it's a little bit risky, you know, Pastor Stephen will know this, when you hold a microphone and the camera's pointing at your face, and this is being streamed on YouTube, because uh, words that used to mean something like 12 months ago now don't mean that anymore. And now those words have adopted a new meaning, and usually the new meaning is inappropriate. So you can be saying words that you think are harmless, and now they're harmful, and it's like, I just can't keep up. It's hard to keep up. And I'm not against trends. Like, I think it's good that we, you know, stay on our A game and we, we know what's fashionable and we know what's up to date and all of those things. I, I'm not against any of those things. But I realized recently we've got a lot of people that know what is hip and not a lot of people who know what is helpful. You see, hip will get you so far in life, but there comes a point where hip won't help. And you've got to know what is helpful in certain seasons of your life. Jesus, in the book of Revelation, is writing to a church, and he's saying, hey, here's the problem. You are neither hot nor cold. I'd I'd rather you be one, preferably hot, but better be cold than lukewarm. Clearly, Jesus ain't a fan of Christians on the fence. And he's saying, 
I'm about to, to spit you out of my mouth because you are lukewarm. You ever had a lukewarm drink? Not the nicest experience. Jesus is saying, I'm about to spit you out of my mouth. And then he goes on to describe how you go from either cold or lukewarm to being hot. And I want to parallel this passage in Revelation to a story now in the Old Testament found in the book of Daniel about three young men by the names of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. If you don't know the story, absolutely fine to give some context to it, there is a king at that time. His name is Nebuchadnezzar. I wish they'd have picked more simple names, Pastor Stephen, that we could preach out of, but I'm going to do my best. King Nebuchadnezzar um, was issuing a decree at the time, and he had built a, uh, a ridiculously large statue, this golden idol, humongous in size, and he issued a decree that the people of the land were to bow down and worship this statue whenever the instruments and the music would strike up. And so, of course, majority of people rolled with it because they had no convictions, and so they just did what they were told. But there were three young men by the names of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego who had been brought up a certain way who knew the Ten Commandments. Of course, at that time, they didn't have the whole Bible, but they had the Ten Commandments as their, their value system. And they, they understood that this went against what they had grown up to believe and, and know as the truth. And so they were the only three guys who refused to do what the king instructed. And then someone comes on the scene and snitches on them. Don't you love a snitch? And he says to King Nebuchadnezzar, hey, there are three guys, they're not doing what you've asked. And so King Nebuchadnezzar calls Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to him. And he says, boys, I'm going to give you one more chance. The next time you hear the music play, you're going to bow down and worship the idol that I have created. And if you don't, I'm going to throw you into a fiery furnace. Now, don't tell me the Bible ain't relevant to today. Because this story sounds an awful lot like 2024. You will believe what we believe or else. You will adhere to our rules, our laws, our regulations, our opinions, our preferences or else. And thank God we're not at risk of a fiery furnace, but maybe you are at risk of losing your job unless you do what it is you're told to do. And I'm not about turning up on time, do that. I'm not about anything like that, but adhering to values that contradict what you know to be the truth. Maybe you're at risk of losing family members or friends because you refuse to bow down to the culture. Maybe you're at risk of being berated on social media because you don't go with the flow of everybody else. And you have a choice to make like Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. Do I bow or do I stand? Well, these three young men faced with a fiery furnace decided we're going to stand. And they said to the king, King, we do not need to defend ourselves in this matter. They understood when you stand up for God, God stands up for you. They understood when people attack you, God will defend you. So they said, King, we don't need to defend ourselves in this matter. We are not going to bow down and worship this idol. Throw us into the fiery furnace if you will. But we know something about our God. Our God is able to deliver us from the fire. And then they have this extra courageous, bold faith. And they say these words, but even if he doesn't. Man, you know you've got faith. When you say, even if God doesn't come through the way I want him to come through, even if God doesn't answer the prayer the way I wanted him to answer the prayer, it is not going to dictate to my faith. I'm going to stand either way. So the king gets real mad at these young punks and throws them into the fire and orders that the heat be turned up seven times hotter than normal. The Bible says that it was so hot that the soldiers 
who took them to the entrance all died because of the heat. But somehow, some way, these three young men are thrown into the fire. And King Nebuchadnezzar looks in utter amazement at the fact that they are walking around in a fire. And he calls his advisors to one side and he says, hey, listen, weren't there three men that we threw into the fire? Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego. Yeah, there were three men. He says, so why do I see four? And why does the fourth look like a son of the gods? You see, friend, the fourth is a picture of Jesus. I've got great news for you today. If you find yourself in a fire, you are not alone in the fire. There is a man within the flames, and his name is Jesus. And so he calls, him, he calls them out of the fire. And I love how quickly the scenario changes. The king, at the start of the story, issues a decree that anyone who does not bow down to this image that he has made is going to be thrown into the fiery furnace. Now he changes the law. He changes the law. He changes the law and states that anyone who speaks ill of the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego will have their houses burnt to nothing. How his tune has changed. And it amazes me about these three young men. And I want to draw out two points for us today. The first being this, they displayed substance over style. Substance over style. There comes a point in life when cute won't cut it. You can know all of the things, you can be up to date on all of the latest trends, but when you are faced with a fiery furnace, cute won't cut it. And this story in the Bible gives us a very clear indication as to where these three men are at on the heat scale. Are they cold? Are they lukewarm? Or are they hot? And we discover based on how they handled the heat, that they're hot. You say, how do I know if I'm hot today, Caleb? You know if you're hot today based on how you handle heat. When you're going through a storm, when you're faced with difficulties, does your life crumble? Do you, do you fall to your knees or do you stand in faith? Do you stand in faith? They chose substance over Style. If you're new to church today, welcome. Pastor Stephen will be back up here next weekend. So if you don't like me, it's fine. I'm getting on a plane tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you, sir. So are you. But I want to just say something about this church. If you're kind of figuring it out right now, figuring it out, can I trust this church? Can I trust these pastors? Let me tell you something. This church has substance. These pastors have substance. You say, how do I know this? Because the church has been here for longer than six months. By the way, this ain't an attack on new churches. I'm just saying, you might get by on style for a little while. But style won't keep you going in ministry. Being cute won't keep you going in church life. If you're going to lead year in, year out, if you're going to lead season after season, if you're going to keep loving people and serving people and leading people, it is an indication to me that there is something about you that is far more than style. I know they look fantastic on the outside, but I need you to know that there is something of substance on the inside. Why? Because after decades, they're still standing after decades, this church is still moving forward. Oh, you better believe you can trust this house. This is a house of substance. But God does not intend just for the pastors to have substance. He wants you to have substance. 
And you say, Caleb, how do I get substance? You gain substance by building a relationship with God. That's how you gain substance, by walking with God. You gain a substance by making this your daily bread. You gain substance through living a life of worship and communication with God. It's not just a Sunday thing. We sang about it earlier. It's an everyday thing. That's how you build a life of substance. These young men, they had substance more than they had style. The second thing they, they displayed is that they had truth more than trend. They had truth more than trend. When the law came into place that said, you've got to believe this or else. These young men, as I said, had had an upbringing where they were familiar with the Ten Commandments, one of which is, you shall make no idols. So they're seeing what the world is saying, and it is contrary to what the Word is saying. Okay, yeah, we know how that feels, right? Yeah, unless you've been sleeping under a rock. The world is saying one thing. The Word is saying another thing. And something didn't sit right in their spirit. And so they had a choice. Do I go with the trend or do I hold to the truth? You say, what is the truth? This is the truth. This was the truth from the foundation of the world. This was the truth long before we got here. This will be the truth long after we are gone. We don't get to determine 2,024 years into the story that we make our own truth. This is my truth. This is my truth. It might be your experience, but truth is not yours to define. Truth has already been set. God has already put into motion two things, right and wrong. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. The Bible says you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. But have a guess how the truth set Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego free because they knew the truth. If you don't know the truth, the truth can't help you. We often quote, the truth will set you free. It will if you know it. But if you don't know it, 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 it won't do anything for you. And if the truth will set you free, have a guess what a lie will do. Keep you bound. And we got a lot of people right now living bound because they believe what they think to be the truth. But this is the only truth. Jesus is the truth. And they understood something. When people come against me, God remains for me. They understood that though people may attack me, my God will defend me. They understood when I honor God, God honors me. So kings say what you want, kings do what you want, but I'm not going to bow to the trend. I'm going to stand for the truth. Are you going to be a cold Christian? Are you going to be a lukewarm Christian? Or do you want to be a hot Christian? Do you want to be the type of believer, the type of Jesus follower that God desires for you to be? How do I do it? You gain substance by building a relationship with God and you hold to the truth of His Word no matter what. Even in, the fight, fight, even in the face of fire, even in the face of adversity, you stand. Knowing that everybody else may be against me, but one with God is a majority. If he is for me, who can be against me? I'm going to invite you to stand to your feet right now as we come into land. Jesus ends. And we can start to play the spiritual music. Oh, it was there before I asked. Beautiful. In, in verse 20 of Revelation 3, Jesus concludes with this. He says, here I am. I stand at the door and knock. 
If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person and they with me. It's an invitation today, friend. I want to ask you today, have you ever opened the door of your heart and let Jesus in? He's a gentleman. He doesn't come barging his way into your life. He stands at the door and knocks. And he says, will you open the door? Will you let me in? Will you let me in? And if you'll let me in, I will come and eat with you. What's he saying? I want a relationship with you. Jesus doesn't just want to be your firefighter. Oh, he'll be that if you want him to be. He'll be right there in the fire with you. He'll get you through it. But he wants to be so much more than that. He wants to be a father. He wants to be a friend. He wants to be closer than the air that you breathe. He wants to be everything and more to you, friend. But you've got to make a decision. Are you going to open the door and let him in? This message that I'm preaching today is not how you receive salvation, it's how you respond to salvation. What I'm preaching today is not what gets you into heaven. I'm preaching to people already going into heaven, saying this is how we respond to the grace of God. He stood up for me, so I'm going to stand up for Him. But it doesn't begin there. The relationship is not initiated by you. He made the move. He went to the cross. It begins by you receiving, not you doing. You receive, then you respond. So to everybody who has received, this is our call. To be men and women, boys and girls of substance and of truth. But to those who have yet to receive Jesus, it begins with you making a decision, I'm going to open the door. And realize I don't open the door because I'm good enough, I'm worthy enough, or I have it all together. No, 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 I open the door because he made the move. He came down the street and he stood at my house and he knows my name. And he said, will you let me in? We're so glad today that you've been with us on Champion TV. You know, there's nothing like celebrating the presence of God in person. So we invite you to bring your family, come to Champion Church. We have amazing children's ministry and all kinds of things going on. Check us out online at champion.church. And remember, God is with you always.